Well, Tobias Elwood joins me now. Uh, Tobias Elwood, um, I've got to say, I watched this uh, video. Um, let's take a little look at uh, parts of it, and I'll come to you after that. All that's happened here since 9-11, this is a very different country in deal. It feels different now that the Taliban have returned to power. Well, it may be hard to believe, but security has vastly improved, corruption is down, and the opium trade has all but disappeared. Pylons distribute electricity to the cities. Solar panels are now everywhere, powering irrigation pumps, allowing more crops to grow. You quickly appreciate this war-weary nation is, for the moment, accepting a more authoritarian leadership in exchange for stability. Well, here in Kabul, the streets are relatively safe. The checkpoints have all gone. Businesses are reopening. The economy is starting to function. Well, Tobias Elwood, I've got to be honest, when I watched it, I thought it might be a spoof because it, it sounded and looked like some kind of thing Alan Partridge would do with the sort of cheerful music, uh, you sort of portraying the place now as a safe haven that everyone could trot down to. Do you regret, with hindsight, putting out that video and the way you put it out? Yeah, um, thank you for inviting me on. It's important to put your hand up and acknowledge errors, however well-intentioned. Uh, you and I have spoken many times. I stand up, I speak my mind, I try and find solutions, especially on the international stage. And I'm very, very sorry that my reflection of my visit could have been much better worded and have been taken out of context. I have written subsequently about the wider issues there. I mean, the background to this, uh, as I think you're aware, I lost my brother in the 2002 Bali terrorist bombing that drew me to visit the country many times over the last decade to understand what we were doing, but sadly see the demise of the efforts there. Um, and uh, I understand that uh, the whole issue of Afghanistan remains very raw, especially with the veterans who served after our departure. And during the visit last week, I was astonished by what I saw. I witnessed something I did not expect to see, an eerie calm, a visible change in security, corruption and, and opium growth, which I felt obliged to report and could have been better reported, absolutely. But I also saw a very vulnerable economy, and this is the important point, that will collapse without international intervention. There's no doubt about it. It'll turn the country back into a failed state. OK, but with Tomorrow's his, his the... About returning, look, mass migration and so forth. OK, but look, you and, you and I have talked, as you said, many times about a number of issues, right? And normally you've been a, you know, a smart observer and commentator on uh, stuff that's going on around the world. I just think this time you just seem to have uh, lost all perspective of how this was going to play out with people. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this video for the reaction it's provoked. You've got The Spectator, which is a conservative magazine, uh, calling you uh, basically a, a Taliban useful idiot. Um, you've got MPs standing up in the Commons on all sides condemning what you were doing. You've got the Prime Minister distancing himself from what you were saying. You've got people like Bill Neely, one of the great foreign correspondence that this country's ever had, saying an astonishing piece of propaganda utterly ignores the rights and lost life chances of half the population, not to mention the disregard for ethnic minorities despised by the new rulers. Maybe Tobias Erwin will reconsider his analysis once his heat stroke has passed. And then you had uh, other correspondents talking about this incident which happened in the last 24 hours. A group of women come out in the streets of Kabul today to protest against the Taliban's closure of all beauty salons in Afghanistan. They chanted, bread work justice. The Taliban used water cannons and gunshots to disperse the protesters. And, you know, one of the many things you say in your video, you talked about potentially using women's rights as some kind of bargaining tool with the Taliban, which caused complete outrage because women's rights should never be used as any kind of bargaining tool. They should be afforded because they're entitled to women's rights. Do you, I mean, yes. at the very least yeah. on that point, would you like to have the opportunity to withdraw that? Well, you've made so many points there. Maybe I have an attempt to, to respond. You know, the strategy that we have at the moment from shouting from afar is clearly not working. We abruptly abandoned the country in 2021. And my simple call to action was to see our embassy reopen, just as the EU embassy has opened as well. And we need to pursue a more direct strategy if we are serious about helping the 40 million people who feel abandoned. I, I understand that there is a natural inclination given the Taliban's ruthlessness, its interpretation of Sharia law, its treatment of women and girls, and in the immense sacrifice that we made uh, with our brave service personnel 
you know, to distance ourselves and to say, no, we're not going to have any truck, which I think is what you're implying. But the awkward truth that we felt, uh, face is that we handed power to the Taliban. We ceded that power. We abandoned those 40 million people. We said we were willing to commit and help. And if we are serious about uh, returning there in any form whatsoever to provide support, that requires engaging, okay, opening do you accept, our embassies. Do you accept that women's rights should never be a bargaining tool? It, I, I would absolutely agree that that would be our position. I'm making it clear of what I believe the Taliban's position is, for which we then need to make a judgment. Well, with, res with, respect, using... with respect to bias, why did, should we give a stuff about what the Taliban think? There are a bunch of hideous misogy handed... There are a bunch of hideous misogynists we... who have taken the country in terms of women's rights back to the Stone Age, quite literally, actually, in some cases. Women there are being oppressed right. on a daily basis, but not allowed to, to be so? educated, but not allowed why to get a beauty are they salon. Able to do and, so? and you're talking about using women's rights as a bargaining tool. I'm simply saying, I'm surely not... on reflection, you wish you hadn't said that. You need that. to let me finish. You need to let me finish, here, otherwise I won't be able to get my point across, OK? Firstly, it is the Taliban that I'm saying, I'm reporting, that's what I saw happening, is the Taliban are wanting to use this as a bargaining tool. They clearly don't care uh, about women's rights. They're, certainly the hardliners don't. And there is a concern within the Taliban itself that many of them may splinter away and join ISIS-K. That's why we're seeing more restrictions coming in. What we're also seeing is the situation with, with women's, uh, with girls' education is actually worse when I discovered. Half the children under the age of 11 don't go to school at all. So, so, so Tobias, I'm sorry to interrupt, help. but if it's worse than you discovered, how on earth could you put yourself to a promo video with all that cheerful music about what great guys the Taliban are? I just don't get it. Well, you can keep referring back to the video, sir. I made it very, very well, clear. Well, you put that it out. That, I, that, was, that was my error. But I've written further than that. I could only say so many things uh, in, in that video, and I make it very, very clear. I put my hand up and say it could have been much better done. But I'm also saying very clearly, too, that our current strategy that we're adopting at the moment is allowing the Taliban to then run this country in a way without any influence whatsoever because they're not listening to you us. Say, OK, but look, you say the Taliban are doing everything to ensure the prosperity of Afghanistan and its people. That's just a total lie. They're not. What I'm saying is, is that if we want, or we are serious about supporting women's rights, if we're serious about getting those schools reopened, then there needs to be quiet engagement. The shouting from afar is not working. In fact, I'm not it's shouting from worse. afar. I'm, I'm just saying that your, your statement that they're doing everything to ensure the prosperity of Afghanistan and its people and they're no longer a terrorist organisation, those statements simply aren't true. They're consorting with lots of terrorists. I'm sorry, it's now but I never, said that, I never said that they were, they were never a terrorist organisation. They never used those words. They were the, this was the very organisation that harboured the very people that killed my brother. So please don't put words into my mouth. OK, if we want to have a serious debate, an awkward, difficult debate of where Afghanistan is going, we spent more time talking about Afghanistan in the last couple of days because of my visit that I'm pleased about. And absolutely, I, yes, I put my hand up and say that that video could be done better. You can keep returning back to that video as much as you like. That doesn't actually get us back to the bigger point of what we are doing internationally to help women and children right. given in the, that country. Given the reaction to the video, which is actually, as you know, something that you put into the public domain, uh, clearly had no idea the reaction it was going to provoke or you wouldn't have done it, but given the cross-party fury about this, given the media fury about this, given the fury of so many people in Afghanistan, given there's now a report in The Times that there's a, a plot currently being undergone to remove you from your position of chair of the Defence Committee, will you be considering your position? I'm travelling with the Defence Committee here in India, where I am right now, and we've, you know, we're, we're working very well together. There is no support for uh, any of what is going on back in the UK. I make it very clear, I don't know how many times I can say this to you, Pierce, you keep returning back to it, you don't allow us to move on. I put my hand up. You know, I step forward on many occasions and say things, perhaps, which other MPs won't say. And occasionally, yes, I say things the wrong way. Because of Twitter, a storm then comes about about it, and I have to deal with it. I'll be very clear. The last couple of days have probably been the most miserable as a member of Parliament. I got it wrong, Piers. I don't know how many times you'd like me to say that. 
but I stand by the fact that Afghanistan is in a very bad place. Well, the economy will crash. We something? have some difficult questions. OK, can I suggest something? Will you delete the video? I'm happy to do so, sir. I'm absolutely happy to do so. Will you do, do that so. immediately this interview is over? Because that would indicate I'm you genuinely to... are remorseful. I, of course I am. And I will not further to that. I'll put, then put out a clarification, clarification of a statement to do so. But All there right. is a, an underlying message uh, that we've not spoken about Afghanistan. I don't know when you last brought it up on your programme. It has been abandoned. The DFID budget for the United Nations... Yeah, you do, so. You don't have to... Quite... Tobias, with respect, you haven't got to lecture me about Afghanistan. My brother was a serving British Army colonel who served tools in Afghanistan, so uh, I'm very aware of Afghanistan. I've covered it uh, a lot over the last years. I was extremely critical of the way we withdrew uh, with the Americans from Afghanistan. It was a total debacle. Uh, but I also happen to think the Taliban are a bunch of ruthless wolves who have taken the, poor, the, poor women, the poor women of Afghanistan back to the Dark Ages. And I think, unfortunately, you got used in some way, which provoked you to do that video, which has looked like it was promoting the Taliban, which I think was a catastrophic error of judgment. And I've known you a long time, and I'd rather be straight with you and tell you that. I think if, the best thing you could do is to finish this interview and delete that video and then explain why you deleted it. I think that would go a long way to putting people's minds at rest that you're not some Taliban stooge, which is how people view it. Yes, it still doesn't answer the question, and I will do all that, make that very, very clear, as to what is our strategy to help the 40 million people who feel abandoned, and we then ceded power to the Taliban. These are, I'm afraid, the awkward questions oh, that when everybody has moved on from this storm right now, we have to still... No, no, there are... Still there are listen, there are, I absolutely agree there are very important questions, but doing a promo video for the Taliban is not any way to go answering them. So I hope that you now delete it and explain why you're doing that, and I appreciate you coming on. And doubtless we'll talk about other things another time. Thank you.